You know what, I guess the best way to start off is uh, my New York credentials. I've been uh, born in Brooklyn, yeah? Raised on Long Island in a place called Kings Park. So right after graduation from high school, I went down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, which is my home today. Uh, that was about 25 years ago, and since then, my studio today has 25 photographers, and we work out of eight cities in four different states, um, everywhere from Atlanta, Georgia, to Dallas, Texas, of course, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and so pretty much, uh, I get to travel the world with uh, my photographers and team of photographers, and I love photography, and that's the one thing you're going to get out of me today. Uh, how much I love photography, and how much you can use what you learn with your photography to just broaden your expression of everything you do having to do with photography. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. And I'll explain a little bit about uh, my cameras and my lenses and why the fisheye is so important with it. To begin with here, uh, I have four lenses that I use all the time. If you don't know anything about me, I'm primarily a wedding photographer. And I have four different lenses. I, uh, in my case, I use only Sigma lenses. I have the 85 1.4. I have the 50 millimeter 1.4. And I have two fisheye lenses that I use. I use the Sigma 50 millimeter. Uh, that's my first fisheye. And I have the second fisheye that I use. The second fisheye that I use is the uh, 10 millimeter Sigma 2.8 lens. But Everyone always asks me, well, what is it about the fisheye that makes it so special? And the first thing I hear all the time, and this is how I know that they're using the fisheye wrong, the first thing I hear with the fisheye is that it's good because it distorts. But if you use it that way, you're actually using it wrong. Here's why the fisheye lens is so miraculous. It'll expand your creativity. The reason why is every other lens that you use or I use, you actually have to look through the lens to make it work. With the fisheye, is the only lens that you could have that you do not need to look through the physical lens to make the, uh, make the lens work. So most of the time if I do that, my pictures become dramatically different because I'm using angles that no one else can imagine. First thing I do when I use my fisheye is how to hold it. I, I know that sounds really funny, but here I have in my camera, I have a 15 millimeter Sigma 2.8. This is how I use it, and I call this the fisheye five. For example, I'm a wedding photographer, and here you have a situation where the bride and groom just got married, and they're coming down the aisle. They said in sports, and I think in hockey, they say, in basketball, they say, well, how come uh, uh, someone's so good at getting the rebounds or finding where the puck is? Because they say those, those sports players predict where the ball is gonna go, and then they position themselves in the right place. With us as wedding photographers, it's simple because we know exactly where they're going. If they're getting married there, they're coming back down the aisle. So I'm prepared for that. But notice how I use my fisheye five. And basically, I'm using five different angles. And even within each angle, I'm using another five angles. And notice how I don't need to look at the camera or look through the camera lens to make it work. So that way, I'm using. Uh, basically, I'm using angles that no one else can imagine or no one else can envision. Uh, first thing I do is I do set it on, on manual and I take my exposure. And with these, especially the, um, the, the uh, fish eyes, they focus so fast so you don't have to worry about that as well. So these are my fish eye five here in this scenario. The bride and groom just got married. I'm going to think of five different angles and each angle that I'm going to shoot, I'm going to create five more angles. The first one is like this, and I, I'll, I'll stand up later to uh, show you. But I actually take the camera, and I put it on the ground, and I take five different shots with it. One, two, three, four, five. Basically, I put the camera on the ground, and then I go, that's my first angle. So they just are getting married. They're, they're giving each other a kiss. One, two, three, four, five. That's my first angle. I don't need to even look through the camera. And imagine how dramatic your photos are going to look because you don't need to be glued to the, the camera this way. So, angle one, they just got married, down on the floor. Angle one, one, two, three, four, five. They're coming down the aisle here. I'm gonna do another one. This time I'm gonna have a straight on angle. Normally you'd be like this, but one, two, three, four, five. They're coming past me. I could do another five angles. One, two, three, four, five. 
they're walking by me, they're walking away from me, do the same thing again, put it down on the floor. One, two, three, four, five. They're walking away and they're giving each other a kiss. One, two, three, four, five. Do you see how dramatic your photos are going to be now because you're using this camera and this lens in a way that no one else could? The reason being is we can't find these angles through what we're seeing. We're not laying down on the floor looking up. We're just taking our camera there and moving it angle by angle. And this way, we're going to have five different angles on something, and we're going to shoot it five different ways. It's tremendously valuable to have this because you don't have to look through the camera lens with it. There's nothing that you can't accomplish once you know this way. For example, when, if you have someone getting married, when you have an angle like this, we can't, without looking at the camera, capture that angle. But with this, just look for any situation with this, five different ways and each angle, five different shots from that angle. The key to photography, when you really think about it, when it all boils down to it, is our strength as a photographer should be that we can find a situation and view things where no one else can envision it or see it. That's really where our strength is as a photographer. Sometimes people will come up to me and say this, I'll be at a wedding, and if someone says this to me, I know I'm not doing my job. They say, oh, did you see this shot? Did you see this shot? Did you see this? If someone's explaining it to me, to me I'm not doing my job if I copy that. Yes, I might get that shot anyway, but how are you going to be better than everyone else if you're just copying their vision? But with this way, and just you can open your expression and open your ideas so many different ways. I've used this uh, technique tremendously. You could do it different ways. You could even do the angles this way, down. You can move it all around. Now this is right here. Uh, I use this one with uh, uh, my uh, 15 millimeter camera. And just to give you an idea about uh, photography in general, I think we always talk about as photographers, we always talk about rules that we have as photographers, that we have to follow this rule. We have the rule of thirds, or we have this rule. And I believe in them. But if we really want to aspire to become great photographers, not just ordinary photographers, but great, think about ways to do things differently than everyone else. For example, right here I have, in my hand, I have uh, uh, my uh, 10 millimeter fisheye. And think, watch how I use this, tremendously different here. Once again, I, I always make it a practice of wrapping my arm around my fisheye this way because I'm afraid the way I hold it that I'm going to drop it down here. But somewhere along the line, someone came up with this rule that you have to shoot pictures with your right hand only. And someone came up with this rule that someone came up with this rule that you have to shoot pictures and basically um, use only one camera. Here I'm showing you a way of how I use my fish eyes here. I have two fish eyes in my hand, and it's very simple here because one hand I have my 10 millimeter, and I can shoot it with my left hand, and I have this one, which is my other fish eye that I have. And so when I'm at a wedding, most people, for example, during the cake cutting, most photographers are doing it how? They're looking at the couple right here. But watch how effective that is because you're seeing only half the, half the action this way. So if you have it this way and you're capturing the action this way, my hand here behind me is behind my back, capturing the events and everything going on behind me. So when they are smashing the cake together and having a good time, where's all the action? The action's behind me. So I'm getting it this way, and I'm getting the action with the fisheye this way. And I could do it the other way now. Now that I have it this way, I could reverse it. Because now here's the 15 and here's the 10. So it's just like the cha-cha shuffle here. I go like this, and now it's reverse, reverse, and I can shoot it this way and get a different angle this way. When you have two fish eyes here, and I'm, and I'm getting actions in different ways. For example, you guys always seen it before, where uh, you guys always seen it before, where you're on the dance floor and you're at a wedding, and there's two things going on. You have maybe the the young little ring bearer. The ring bearer is having a great time, right? The ring bearer is doing his break dancing and everything. So he's having a good time. So you're having little Timmy here. He's breaking, go Timmy, go Timmy. The mom's laughing here, so you got the mom this way. And then you got reverse, reverse, and you got it this way. But you're getting it with two different ways. Think about this. 
Think about how many times us as wedding photographers, they're leaving the, uh, they're leaving the reception and they're blowing bubbles. And sometimes you, you think you're going to get the perfect photo there, but what happens? You have the bubble right in their face, right? Because you only have one angle. But with this, easy. You have two angles going this way, and you're shooting double, and you're making sure that you capture everything. Here's a, a, another great thing that, that I've had. Um, I'm from uh, uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and actually Charleston, South Carolina, is perhaps the destination wedding capital of the world. The reason being is we have so many people coming from all over the world, and what they do is they come vacation in the South, and they bring all the different ideas. One of the ideas that was really neat, uh, have you ever seen a dove release before? A dove release, okay. I now pronounce you husband and wife, and then they bring the uh, a little birdcage with the dove there, and they release it. Okay, me, how nervous am I as a photographer? Because I gotta get this, right? So it's fine, I got two cameras going to make sure I got the dove release when it, when it happens. I am not joking, one time we did that, they had a dove release. I now pronounce you husband and wife. They bring over the dove. I'm nervous, oh geez, okay. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. The dove releases, I am not joking. A hawk came oh, down no. and ate the bird. Oh, no. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Now there's buzzards, buzzards, and the bride is crying, the bride is crying. A rooster crowed three times. And then just then, everyone remembered it was the fat lady that sang Ave Maria. <laughs> but well, you can see how productive you can be having two cameras. I'll show you the other way. Like, I don't always use uh, two fisheyes. Sometimes I will use it. I have my 50 in there. And sometimes you'll have this situation here with the, uh, with the camera here. Uh, wedding photographers always have this problem. They're coming out. And usually when they're coming in, it's real easy because they're trained, they'll walk really slow, right, coming into the wedding. When they walk out, those are the good pictures anyway. Why? Because they're all, oh, we did it. We're all, everyone's smiling. It's done. Yep. So what happens, though, whenever they relax like that, they start booking their way down. Photographers always have that problem where they're like, oh, how can we get every single person in there? Same thing. I have two cameras. On this one, I have my traditional 50. And so as they're walking down, I'm going to try to get that traditional shot, and I'm going to line it up this way and get them. But if I miss them, I have my other lens right here to get them. And then as they're going by, oh, they went too fast. I got them anyway. OK, here they are. This one's good. Got them. And this way, I'm able to uh, effectively double over everything I'm doing. But notice that. Notice how effective it is, as far as you as a photographer, what you can do when you have uh, these kind of cameras with the fisheye lenses. It completely, completely opens up the whole new world to you because you can shoot things at an angle that no one else can ever imagine or no one else can envision. So that's what I love so much about this. I'll go through some pictures and uh, walk you through so I can see what I'm, we're talking about here. Here's an example with this. Uh, same thing. What we just exactly talked about, this is in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, by the way, this uh, bride right here was featured on Say Yes to the Dress. I think it's even, it either just showed or is showing this month. But uh, same thing. This time, the bride is walking down with his father. And uh, to me, I mean, which, what bride would not want this beautiful picture with, with her father walking down there? Same thing. I just, it's just a matter of me picking an angle. I put my camera down on the floor, and I don't know where the correct angle is, but I'm going to take five different pictures. One, two, three, four, five. And as we do this, I'm going to be able to capture it, and you can see the beautiful uh, ambient light there. Um, as much as you know about me, these lenses, they run at 2.8, so that way it allows for a lot of light to come into it. I hardly ever use flash. In fact, I almost try almost never to use flash when I do this to pick up every sense of available light there. But I thought this was a, a, a neat picture having to do with that. And also, like I said before, um, as far as exposure, I'm actually taking a test shot beforehand in manual because, and I need to take that in manual, and I'll tell you why. When you're doing this, if you're moving the camera one way or another, 
every time you move it, if you're on auto exposure, what's going to happen? It's going to ch yeah, it's going to change all over the place. So I, I lock it in at manual on what I think is the best exposure. In this case, usually the the skin tone there. And once I have that there, I just leave it like that. You don't have to worry about the focusing. First of all, uh, the thing I like about the Sigma lens is they're extremely fast in uh, focusing. The uh, the other prime lenses have the engines in it that makes it go really fast. And with the fisheye, you're not going to really have a problem anyway. You're able to shoot it effectively, and the autofocus works just great with it. OK. Here's a, a good example. Uh, this was taken, uh, and it, it's a good illustration for us here as a photographer. About two or three years ago, I made a uh, New Year's resolution to myself. And I told myself, I said, you know what? I am never going to say that word again to myself. Ah, I wish I had my camera around. You've all known that you've all dry, drove down somewhere and you, you say that. Or you might say something like this, which is my, uh, uh, my resolution. I said, I'm never going to go through life again and say, you know what? I wish I just should have just stopped and took that picture. Well, in this case, it took it one step further here. Um, where I live in Myrtle Beach, from the way from Myrtle Beach to Charleston, South Carolina, is about two hours. And there was a, a humongous forest fire there. So we're driving by all the time, and we see all these, these trees with no leaves on it, and it's all burnt up. And this is one of those cases, and, and I implore you as a photographer to keep looking this way. But I said to myself, I said, you know what? That would be a great place to bring a bride. So this bride already got married, and we said, hey, you know what? Why don't, if you have time, it's, it's like an hour out of the way, but you won't regret it if we go down there. And so once again, we took that picture. And notice with this picture, and even with the other pictures, is there distortion? Technically, yes. You can see all the trees going down into the center. But this picture isn't great because of the distortion. It's great because of the angle. And that's what I'm saying. It's just a matter of you taking the camera, putting it down on the ground, and just working a couple different angles. One, two, three, four, five. If you want, turn it this way. One, two, three, four, five. Think of different ways that you could take the same picture with uh, different angles. OK, once again, this is in Wilmington, North Carolina. Is there anything great and uh, tremendous about this? Well, for example, it is uh, taken with a fisheye. But with the fisheye, even here, it's not overly dramatic as far as uh, any kind of distortion. It's just basically capturing all the uh, information there. And that's why it's also great when I shoot that I like to use uh, almost all ambient light. I almost never use flash, if possible. That way I could capture all of that. And these lenses are great for doing just that. OK. This is a, a, a simple shot that I use a lot uh, in. This one was actually in Jacksonville, uh, the Jacksonville beaches. Uh, beautiful setting there. And once again, it's just me taking a different angle. Most people don't take uh, pictures or look from that, that way. And I'm going to show you this example over another one coming up. OK. Here we have another angle, but this is a, I shot this one exactly the same way as this one. So I said, you know what? Here we go. I'm going to take this uh, low angle. And it was good, but it wasn't really hitting me in a special way. So once again, did the fish eye 5 and I found five different angles with it. So instead of doing it this way, I tried one, two, three, four, five. Instead, I said, you know what? Let's do a middle one. And I go one, two, three, four, five until I found a, a nice angle with this. And once again, is this gimmicky? Is this a, a distortion picture that's with the fisheye? No, it's just a neat angle that no one really, really thinks about that angle. This one was at my wedding in Hilton Head Island, which is uh, just south of Charleston. It's a beautiful place uh, uh, to go. And it's just, you know, I'm able to use uh, uh, the environment there to capture it and just picking a completely different uh, uh, type of angle for it. Once again, here's some more where um, I'm basically taking pictures of uh, uh, the couple here with a low angle. And you can see how uh, even down here, you can definitely see how there's uh, the, the leaves are captured by the, um, the depth of field there. OK, this one was taken in Charleston, South Carolina. Once again, I'm using my uh, Sigma 15 millimeter 2.8. Is there distortion? No. But it's wide enough so I can capture all the stuff going on. And 
the rainbow here was legit. Uh, once I put it on Facebook, uh, my friend in um, Myrtle Beach, he is a, uh, he's a weatherman there. His name is Ed Piotrowski, so I sent it to him. He put it on his newscast at night. And the funniest thing, he posted it on his Facebook, and there were people commenting, oh, you know, Gene Ho is photoshopping <laughs> rainbows on there. But it, it was funny because it was actually like this. And obviously, there was about 300 guests there. Everyone saw it. But basically, you know, by having uh, this lens, rather than having one of the prime lenses I use, which is a 50 millimeter or an 85, I'm able to back off just enough so I can catch the ambient light with it. Just, just love it. And it just shows you, once again, to always be prepared in whatever you're doing to make sure you be able to capture that. Uh, I will say that on this one, um, not that it's cheating or anything, this one I did because of how it is. If, if you know about photography, of course, I had to use a flash for this. So I put on the flash and popped it. Um, later on, I'm going to show you more pictures here about how I use this fisheye at night with no flash at all. But in this, of course, we uh, uh, discussion for another day, balance fill flash. This is balance fill flash 101, where I meter for the back and then pop it with, uh, with uh, my flash to balance it out. So it's a very, very plain and traditional. When it comes to that, it's just a, a neat shot. OK, here's the difference. Here's a, a, a 10 millimeter uh, fisheye. And now you can see a little bit of the distortion uh, come in here. You can see how it's really distorted here and really distorted. That's the difference when you look in between the 15 millimeter fisheye and the 10 millimeter fisheye. If I have both of them, but if I prefer one, I really like my 15 a lot. Because yes, when it comes to this, then it starts getting really, I won't say gimmicky, but it starts getting, yeah, it starts getting with a lot of distortion. But sometimes it does work as well. So it's not like to say that I never use my uh, 10 millimeter. But like I said, again, when you're looking for different perspectives, it's good and handy to have both of them there. OK, once again, I have uh, uh, another uh, picture here where I use the piers with that. And uh, this one right here was taken in, in Atlanta. Uh, the fisheye does bend a little bit, and that's why the trees uh, end up that way. But notice there's no distortion at all on them. The ground is, is pretty much uh, narrow there. And I just love this picture because of the fog that day. It's just like if you could use anything to your advantage as a photographer, it, it helps. When uh, going along with my um, theory of, uh, of, of saying that I'm never going to not stop and go somewhere to take a picture, one time I was in Columbia, South Carolina. We were shooting a wedding at the governor's mansion there. And we're finished. Me and my crew, we're exhausted. We're tired. But just like anywhere else, like you have that sense where you, you know you can smell the rain when it comes. So I'm leaving. I was like, oh, man, it's going to rain in a little bit. I can smell it. So we stopped. And that my, my crew is thinking, like, I'm crazy because we're exhausted. Went to the state house. I don't have the picture with me. But I actually stopped, took a picture within the fog of the state house in the background. It was just like eerie. And it was just neat. But it just shows you once again that like when you really love what you do, to go out there and just make a pledge to yourself to say, listen, I'm never going to go back to that where I say, oh, I wish I had my camera, or oh, I wish I could have done this shot or that shot. Just do it. Just have fun with it. OK, once again, all it is is about angles. Again, it's a fisheye, but it's not a fisheye because, oh, it's distorted. This is a, a picture where, of course, we uh, went up to a, a top ledge and shot down. But the lenses, being a little shorter, allows us not to go all the way up several stories. But once again, you're getting different angles. And sometimes if uh, if you are tall enough, you could even do one where it's like this. And sometimes that's sufficient if you can't get up. But you're just picking different angles and making something where no one else can see it. When you see this picture, it's a neat picture. Love it. But like no one's ever going to come up to me at a wedding and say, oh, I wish you could do this, this, or that, because I can't see this, this, or that. Only you can, and only you can imagine it to be that way. OK, once again, here's another fisheye shot. I love the ceilings. And notice, because I'm not using flash, uh, you can see the ambient light there. Just pops it out and just makes it for a very interesting looking picture. But it's at an angle which no one else would uh, ever dare to dream or imagine. OK. Um, that is uh, one way that I use my fisheye. The other amazing, amazing thing about the fisheye lens, 
is, for some reason, normally with a 50 or an 85, the lowest shutter speed that you could successfully hand hold your camera at maybe is what, 60, right? Right? Maybe, uh, you know, 30 if you're uh, especially better at holding the camera. With this camera here, uh, your camera and a fisheye lens, you are able to drop down tremendously lower in your shutter speeds. So that means you don't have to use flash, and then you can open up the camera to just an amazing, amazing degree with this. The way that I do this is whenever I shoot at night, I call this uh, part of the, the program, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Because for the longest time, I was. I was afraid to shoot, and if I did shoot, I would say, oh, I got to use flash photography for that. And I'm not a big fan of flash because I feel like it washes out a lot of stuff, and I feel like my ambient light is compromised with that. So whenever possible, I try my best not to use uh, any kind of flash at all. Sometimes I have to, but whenever I can, I will go without it. So what I've done with this is I actually s physically meter something. And sometimes uh, with this, my ISOs are pretty jacked. Um, I sometimes I'm bringing my ISO up to 2,000 or 1,600. But I just meter it like I would any other day. And when you're metering at this, it goes really slow. You can hear the shutter speed, and most people can't hand hold it like that. And I don't use a tripod on any of these pictures. I do brace myself. If I'm uh, putting it down on the floor, I'll put it down against the floor and, and shoot it that way. But we discovered a technique, and I think it has to do with the mere timing and mathematics of it. At tremendously slow shutter speeds, I found out that if you shoot multiple exposures of it, you're going to catch everyone in the perfect zen, in the perfect sync, where everything slows down for a second. I Kenny almost can't explain it, but this is how I do it. I put it down on the, uh, on the ground, so I'm kneeling down like this, so it's holding it, and I physically just do this. I go, <sighs> okay, and I say, okay. Now look at each other again. Okay, ready? Just look at each other, give each other a kiss. <sighs> Okay, I know it sounds crazy and how that works, but I just want to show you, and I have the proof of the, uh, the pictures here, how, how I do it. Here's one of those pictures here. All available light, no flash at all, but you could tell it's available light because look at how nicely the light is captured because the flash is not overwhelming anything. Now, here's what I wanted to show you with that. Notice the shutter speed. The ISO is, yes, the ISO is a little bit jacked, okay, 1250 ISO, 2.8. Look at my shutter speed on that, one-fifth, handheld, one-fifth. Now, there are plenty of, plenty of bl uh, blurry pictures of this, but look how, look how sharp that is. It's because, I, and I don't know the science behind that, and I apologize for not studying the science behind it, but it's just holding the camera and just going, <sighs> click, click, click. Click, click. Somewhere along the line is evidently my heartbeat, their heartbeat, everyone's heartbeat's like all in sync and they're frozen in time. But look, look at that. I mean, that is a, uh, we, we purposely took a picture of the back of the camera because we, we couldn't even believe, we were shocked. I was like, oh my God, it really works. Okay, here's another one. Okay, once again, you can see the ambient light from the, from the water here. It's pretty neat. They're kissing each other here. So beautiful. Okay. Once again, my ISO is jacked, 2.8. Look at my shutter speed on this. Yeah, it's, it's very, that's very, very slow. It's a, extremely slow. But I'm able to do that because we just came up with this idea one day to say, you know what, forget the tripod, forget everything. But we do it this way. We just hold the camera down, and we do take a deep breath, and we just, just keep on shooting it, and, and we were able to nail it. And it is pretty sharp. It is very sharp here. So everything works out well with that. Okay. Once again, here is a, a different shot. And once again, I love it. It's uh, using a lot of the ambient light there. And it's the same thing, no, no flash at all. No flash at all. Okay, on my, 
my main website is geneho.com. I have another website called undergroundgeneho.com. You can see the, the links there. Of course, go on the Facebook if you like and uh, like that. But we're doing this thing. I call this uh, the blue hue in the sky. I call this a midnight sunset. It's a phenomenon that happens about a half an hour after the sun already goes down. The reason why this happens is our human eyes cannot capture that because our eyes are done for the day and at 60th of the shutter speed you cannot capture this. It's too dark. The blue hue there is coming because our shutter speed is open for so long that it's absorbing all that light and it only lasts for about 15 minutes or about a half an hour after the sun already goes down. And once again you can see from this you can see uh, Without a flash, you can see how, how neat it looks. And it's only possible through the, the fisheye lens doing it that way. OK, same location. This time is a little bit uh, of a different uh, area there. And we have also, I don't know, we've, we've kind of done this thing where we, uh, we do these sneak peeks for our brides where we put the name there. And it's just a, that's why you see all the names there. We send it out to them, and they, they Facebook it out, and all is good. OK. Here you go again. Another one right here with the, uh, what I call the midnight sunset. And uh, on this one in particular, um, this one might have had a flash. It does look like it has a flash uh, from here. So it's not like I say that I never use a flash. And then if that's the case, it's just a matter of what we call dragging the shutter. But it's a, the same principle there. Uh, this one uh, is another one which I know for sure that it wasn't a flash because I did this one myself. Some of these other pictures my photographers have taken. Beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, this is the old exchange building. If you ever travel down there, it's, uh, Char Charleston is one of the most amazing places in the world to take pictures. It is absolutely beautiful. Okay, another one right here where we're using the available light. And another one from Charleston, South Carolina. You can see the skyline there, uh, the midnight sunset. And it just makes for a really neat picture um, here. This is uh, Atlanta. And I think, ah, uh, oh, my goodness. This is not an amazing picture right here. Uh, this one was taken in Savannah, Georgia. And once again, the advantage of this is, number one, it's impossible really to get this picture without a fisheye because you're going to fall off the ledge or fall off the roof somewhere. But uh, Savannah, Georgia is just a, just a remarkable place. But this is them on the roof. And uh, uh, this picture was taken by Nadine Brulman, who's a, a photographer at the studio. You can see just uh, how a tremendous uh, picture here because of that. And it's the same technique. Um, in this case, I'm not sure how it was, it was done. But once again, with the fisheye, if I'm standing here on a ledge, I don't have to stand here on the ledge. Because why? Because you could actually do, once again, with your left hand here and go like this to do it. See the advantage of having the fisheye? You don't even have to look through it. OK? All right. Um, old exchange. Uh, I think this one was in Charleston as well. We do a lot of work down there. Oh, uh, one of the things I want to talk to you about with the fisheye, this is really important. There is distortion, but notice how I'm dead center here. By being dead center, there's no distortion on the house. The, the, I always look for the horizon line of the house. That's where the distortion, if there is, there's technically maybe distortion on this side or that side. But with this 15 millimeter, you can look straight ahead. Also, I wanted to say something here, a little of a, a trick that I use. You know that technique that I just talked about where I just hold the camera and I go, OK. There's a reason why every single one of these shots that the couple is either kissing or looking at each other. The reason being is I don't want them to look at my camera because I don't want the one shot that I happen to get them where they're, they're not moving. Because I mean, this shot, we just talked about. There's like five or six different shots, maybe even 10. I probably set them, say, had them go there and say, OK, ready, one, two, three, four, five, and just keep on shooting that. This picture right here probably took five minutes, 10 minutes to shoot. But out of all these pictures, it might be like three or four really good ones. So I don't want the one good one of them to be looking at the camera and one of them is blinking or is making a funny face. So that's why they're always doing it that way, so that if they are blinking, you can't really tell or anything. So that's a little, like I guess, tricky thing that I've done with that. OK. Um,
Beautiful. Does anyone, uh, well, you don't want to know what kind of city this is or what kind of hotel? It doesn't look beautiful. Uh, you know, that's what I, I want. This is, uh, I swear, the Holiday Inn. Okay. It, it just shows you when you're taking the picture. I did it the same way. It's a beautiful hotel to begin with. But look at how, like, I'm using this picture, and then it's just like I'm creating something completely different uh, based upon that. You can see just by not using flash and not overwhelming the, um, uh, the light there, you can see how it just glows really, really nicely there. Okay, one of the things, I'm not going to go into too much with it, but um, with this, when I do use flash, um, I do this a lot to add drama to my um, pictures at the reception. If you see them, the flash I'm using to freeze them, and then you can see the shutter speed here is about maybe a 15th of a, of a second. So that's why you see all the action behind them. It just adds a drama. Does that make sense of, of what I'm talking about there? So I do that, and I use flash. And I'm actually having the flash there. And I'll have my, uh, usually at this point at, of the night, I'll have two lenses here. I'll have my 50 and a fisheye. And I'm using flash to capture it. Again, if there's a time where I cannot wear um, not using flash, I prefer that. But sometimes you just can't help it. And there's no way to be a purist in that case. So that way, I. I was able to capture it that way. Oh, OK. Um, this is Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And I hope you get to visit. And if you do, come see me. My stu I have a studio there. This is the uh, Myrtle Beach Sky Wheel. And when I took this picture, same thing. I'm thinking of different ways and different angles to shoot it. So in this case, I'm just taking the camera straight down, dropping it down to the ground so I'm like this. And then I do my angles right here. And I'm doing it at slow shutter speed. That's why you can see all the ambient light just pop out at you. OK, the question that I've had before was, how in the world did you do this? How in the world did you put them perfectly centered in the, the sky wheel there, if I'm not looking at the camera? Because I'm not physically lying on the ground here. OK, this is the reason why, and if you understand the fish eye here, Wherever you look, you're looking the same place your camera's looking at. Except for when I'm looking at something, I'm looking at it from a perfect, is it 90 degree angle? I don't even know my math. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, OK, is that what it is? OK, I, my math is not that good. But I can shoot photography. OK, so uh, straight ahead, you're looking at it 90. So all I have to do is line up my eyes to where I want their heads to be. So all it is, my view is at 90. But their view is at 45 degrees angle, so it's the same thing. So there wasn't like exactly planned. I didn't have to do anything. If I'm physically looking at it and their head's centered there, it, wherever I look is going to be centered as well. That's why you don't have to, as long as you know where your body is and where you're looking at, unless you're doing like that picture in Savannah where you have to, you're standing on a ledge here and you're trying to do this, which is fine too. Basically, you know what the angles are going to be there. Isn't that neat? I love that, the, the, the sky wheel picture there. Basically, me as a photographer, that is uh, what I do, is I try my best to do what I call invent something where people can envision something, I can envision it, and at the same time, give them something that is totally different from anything else. Long time ago, I had a friend, and uh, he is a lawyer, and he's a friend, but he's one of those uh, shutter bugs, and he says, hey, Whenever you go out on a shoot, just let me follow along. So I had this shoot that was at this hotel. And brought my uh, photographer friend over. He's actually a lawyer. And we went to this hotel and we're shooting. And I said this. Um, actually, I was shooting and I overheard him talking to the manager. And he said, you know what? What makes Gene special is that he can see things that no one else can see. And I was thinking about that for a second. And I was like, you know what? Maybe that's the thing. Maybe." for us to be great photographers, not just to be ordinary photographers, but to be great photographers. Perhaps we can do something where we can envision something that no one else can see. Yes, to be a good photographer is what we have been learning to do all our lives. We can see something and we can match it. That's what makes us up to the point where we are now. My mom can see a beautiful sunset, but she says tries to take a picture and she can't figure out why, what she saw. In, with her eyes doesn't match her camera. She doesn't understand why the, how the flash works and so forth. And I get that. 
a good photographer will do that plus go the extra step and see things that no one else can see. That's where your strength as a photographer should be, to overwhelm you and your clients and overwhelm them on what they can see. And that's why I feel so strongly about the fisheye. And I'll show you how I tie it all together. Um, I, um, by the way, I've been uh, uh, brought to you here today by a company called Black River Imaging. And they make, they're my lab, but they make wedding albums. And what we do is we take it one step further because they make, uh, Black River Imaging makes these albums and we call them fusion albums. I'll show you what a full wedding uh, album looks like and how we use that. If you can envision it, this is the, uh, the front page and this is the back page. This is the cover, right? So it's like a book and this is the front and this is the back. Uh, this uh, wedding in particular is uh, the wedding of Chris Wilcox. He, right now he plays for the Boston Celtics. And if uh, he, he follow the NCAA, he won the uh, Final Four. He won the whole tournament as a Maryland Terrapin. But we got a chance to do his wedding, and this is what his cover looked like. Uh, once again, uh, we're using this. In this case, we're using an 85 to capture the background. But this is actually their wedding uh, album, how it looked like. But just a, a, you know, piecing it all together and uh, using also uh, different lenses and coming in with it. Uh, if you notice this right here, the one thing that's, I think, unique to the Sigma 15 millimeter 2.8, it also doubles as a macro lens. So I'm able to come in really close to things. And I, I'm not sure that it comes uh, like that with the 10 millimeter, or at least we haven't tried it. But the 15 is, is unique to the 15. I'm not even sure the other, um, or to the Sigma, I'm not even sure that the, the Nikons or the uh, Tamrons will even have that. But it's really unique with that. OK, here once again, we're, we're going back to the fisheye work here. And uh, uh, once again, I'm getting a nice low angle there. By the way, this, this uh, Chris Wilcox is 6'10". So you can imagine trying to uh, photograph this picture. We had stools the photographers used to, to, to get up there. <laughs> OK. So uh, some more pictures. And this is how we tie it in. He got married in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. You can see his uh, uh, ample size wedding party. And we make this into an album, and uh, Black River Imaging takes them. They do an amazing job, and they have this unique paper that they use. It's called Irish Linen to make it look even better, and we use it with a canvas cover. And uh, here's a, a thing we do with the, all the pictures. Um, whenever I go out and shoot, we always try to get uh, a picture of the general area there. And we try to go in there before anyone else does so we can see, so they can see what it looks like. And we've added this into the show album here. Isn't that a, isn't that a great wedding cake? <laughs> All right. So, so you can see the Maryland Terrapins. He's a, uh... yeah, that's the other thing about it. I'm telling you, all these things I see, because uh, my studio does a, a, a ton of weddings a year. So I get, we get to see all these really neat things that people are doing, the different cakes and the, and the latest things. and. This is really neat. Okay, um, here we have uh, uh, them when they're leaving, and uh, yes, uh, on this one we had it's dark out there. We had to break out the flash. You can see a little bit of it. I guess I should have photoshopped it out. You can see a little bit of the flash uh, behind there. And uh, once again, one more picture right here, and you can see that as well. So that's uh, basically how uh, how I use my fisheye. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of these things. Uh, Anyway, um, if I could kind of segue, I'm going to go into some of my other lenses, and then we'll, we'll finish up. But one of the things I want to talk to you about as far as a, a photography goes is I cannot even begin to tell you, um, number one, the, the passion that I have for photography. I love, love being a photographer. I love shooting. It like engulfs everything that I, I could uh, do when it comes to it. I always think constantly of different ways. And I walk into a room, and I hope some of you have this, that some of you have this as a curse, that when you walk into a room that you can see something. It's like, oh, you know, like you feel like you're the only ones that, that, that can see something that way. Um, let me tell you a little bit about, um, about greatness for a second. And, and uh, I also love music. Um, I am not very talented at all when it comes to music. But when it comes to music, it's almost like you had to be born with some sort of gift to do it. Um, same thing with sports. I love sports. 
Uh, we, if you go into our, uh, my website, geneho.com, you can see a lot of these uh, famous athletes that we've uh, taken photo of. We, you saw the basketball player. We did the uh, wedding of um, the Houston Texans, their uh, lead quarterback, Matt Schaub. I love sports, but I'm like, when it comes to sports, I don't have that physical talent to be a, a, an athlete. Don't have that physical talent to be, um, to be a musician. I have the love for it, but the thing I like about photography is when it comes to photography, the greatness is reserved within you. I, you know, I was in, a, a, we have a place in a Reno where we shoot weddings, and one time I went there, and the best thing about traveling as a photographer is I get to, to see the area, but there was a group there that's, it's kind of like a special to a certain genre, but there's a group called Queensryche. And it's a, it's a band, very popular, but their lead singer is uh, Jeff Tate. Never met him in my life, uh, just seen his concert. Oh, man, I just love the way this guy sings. He's amazing. So go to Reno, and oh, could you believe it? My wedding's on Saturday, and on Friday, they're playing in Reno. So I'm going down there, I get tickets, and I'm walking through, and I see one of the roadies are setting up. And the guy, roadie goes up to me, he goes, you're drinking Starbucks. I'm a Starbucks addict, by the way. I say, yeah, he goes, where, where do I get one? I said, no, it's just down the street. I tell you what, if, if I get you some Starbucks, could you let me meet Jeff Tate? And he says, nah, it's just Starbucks and it's just, just Jeff Tate. You know, here I am, like, here's my lesson for that. I am enthralled with Jeff Tate. I think he's just the most amazing singer. But here's the thing, this guy is so close to Jeff Tate, he sees him every day, that Jeff Tate's not even special to him anymore. He doesn't even, he probably, quite frankly, he probably treats him with disdain. You know, he, yeah, great, he's setting it up, but he's probably treating him with disdain. He sees him every day. Here's my point about this. Greatness is very seldom seen in close proximity. And I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about you. See, all of you have the power when it comes to photography to be not only good, but make it your intention to be great at what you do. See, the difference is, and I hate it when, I, I, one pet peeve I have about uh, professional photographers, even some, sometimes when they lecture, you don't want to be me. You want to be greater than me. This, the whole thing about this thing, I, I call it the I'm here and you're there mentality. I don't know where this came from, where someone says, Oh, well, uh, I've been doing this longer, so, so I should be here. And you, you guys got to work. And once you work, you'll catch up to me. The difference with what we're doing today is photography, when used in this fashion, it makes it so that is your vision versus my vision. It's not my many years of experience. I've been doing this 25 years. It's not, oh, I have accomplished this. It's your vision, your mind versus my mind. It's your personality versus my personality, is you being able to look at something and outscoop me and say, you know what, I bet you Gene's going to go into this room and sees this. You can say, you know what, I bet he's going to do this, but I bet he doesn't see this. That's how you as a photographer and we as a photographer can become great. It's totally up to you. It doesn't have anything to do with necessarily putting in your time, which I do agree. You need to, you need to study this. You need to practice this. But when it comes to photography, this is, this is totally a different ball game. This is not, we're not shooting, you know, baskets at Madison Square Garden. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to do that, but I do know how to, to manage my own vision. I know how to walk into a room, and I know how to walk into a place, and I know how to see things that no one else can see, and it's the same way with you. Whether you use this lens, or you could say with another lens of how you use a, a zoom lens in a different way, it's your vision versus my vision. So excuse everyone else when they ever say to you that, oh yeah, well you're not up to that yet because uh, cause we're up here and you're, you're down here. It has nothing to do with that. That's what I love about photography. When it comes to photography, whatever you do, it's just up to you and it's up to your vision and that's what makes you special as a photographer. It has nothing to do with anything else. Um, the other thing I want to talk to you about is uh, uh, a unique passion that I have uh, uh, outside of this. Um, my whole life is revolving, revolving around uh, photography, but I do want to uh, uh, show you this, in, in this video of, a, of a, 
a group that I'm involved in. I'll tell you how. I'll tell you exactly um, how I'm involved with this in a second. Now let me just play. Is this a short video? Hands on Darius Rucker. And in a minute, you're going to hear from Gene Ho. He's one of my friends from Victory Junction. He's going to tell you how you can help these kids. Victory Junction. Fantastic. Hi, I'm Gene Ho. Victory Junction is a year-round camp for kids with chronic and serious illnesses. It's set in a medically sound environment which enables children to have a safe experience in the time of their lives at absolutely no cost to their families. Join me in making a big difference in the lives of these children with your tax-deductible donations. To find out more, just go to victoryjunction.org and feel your heart race. Okay, thank you. Now, thank you. Let me please uh, let you know how I got involved with this um, company here. And it's, uh, or it's actually this charity here. Um, I am, uh, now I am 40, 42 years old and went through all my life. I, ha I do have two stepchildren, but I went through all my life with no children because I was almost deathly afraid. And as the years march on, you know, I'm an older dad. I'm thinking, oh, geez, I'm going to, you know, you know, will something happen to my kid or is my kid going to be healthy? And anyone here who's a parent, that is the first thing you, you think about when you're, you're, your wife is pregnant or you're pregnant. You think about all oh, that, you know, my, my child. So, you know, the, uh, we'll get really personal here for, for a second. This is uh, um, how, how I think. Most people don't... Uh, most people don't think about this, but like I, I always think a little different. I thought I was like maybe I'll make a, a, a pact, pact with God. And most people don't negotiate with God or have the right to it. I, and maybe I'm just don't know what I'm thinking. But I said, listen, please, if my baby is healthy, I will dedicate my life to championing that cause of the baby somehow that are, are a little less fortunate. So that's what went on. I was like, you know what? I said, even if my baby's healthy, I'm still going to champion this cause, as if all those kids are, are mine. So I saw this commercial on Victory Junction. It's an amazing charity. Basically, what they do is they, it's a camp for kids that are chronically ill, and they get to go to camp, spend uh, a week with other kids that are, that are sick, and they get to enjoy life. And I promise you, when you look at that and you think, shame on, shame on us, or shame on, or, or whatever, it's shame on us if we, these kids live more in one week than most of us live in a whole lifetime. I mean, if you're like me, you're, you're worried about the next bill that you have to pay or, or the next job. With these kids, they go there and they enjoy themselves. So it just happened that um, I said, you know what, I'm going to get involved. I called Victory Junction up and I said to them, listen, you know, um, my name is Gene Ho. How can, I, how can I help you? How can I make a donation to your cause? And uh, in the, uh, the South, they're actually based in North Carolina. I do a lot of work with uh, the different NASCAR drivers. We've done some of their weddings. Um, Joe Gibbs, uh, who is uh, the football great, he owns a, a NASCAR team. Been doing his family for many years. So I'm fairly well known in that, that area, the NASCAR community with that. So I called them up and they said, you know what? Rather than making a donation right now, why don't you just come and do a uh, public service announcement? And since then, that's been playing all over. Um, uh, most of the country with that, which the, the reason why I bring that up to you and, and my mission here when it comes to that is not that I want uh, um, uh, you to make any kind of donations. I do have a book here. One of my books is The Art of Marketing. You can get it on my website, but every once in a while I'll bring some to us when I speak. Uh, when I do uh, bring them to speak and, I, and someone buys them, I, it just goes to charity uh, with that. We'll worry about that later if anyone wants it. But the real reason that I wanted to bring that up to you is that if you do know anyone who's getting married, especially if you're a wedding photographer, all I ask, please, is you know when you go to weddings and the bride and groom, they need party favor gifts, and sometimes they have like, you know, they give away different things that you take home for the guests. Sometimes brides and grooms choose to opt out of that and make a donation to a charity instead. Just asking you, please, if you remember that, please to just say, hey, you know what? There's a great charity called Victory Junction. And if you call them, they'll even put something on the, the bride's tables to say, in lieu of party favors or par parting gifts or whatever, uh, we've made a donation to Victory Junction. And uh, that's what I'm trying to, to, you know, all the money that, that we put in, it does help and it does make a difference. But if we get the word out there, and, and that's what I would do. Uh, 
just going a little bit uh, personal, I want to show you. Uh, this is my son. Aww. He's not even uh, <laughs> he's not even two years old yet, and he's just, you know it's just a great great uh, time to have around. Yeah, I find out he he copies me a lot. Like one time he um, dropped a cupcake, and he goes, "Oh crap, <laughs> crap! Oh jeez!" So he just likes to copy whatever I whatever I like to do. I don't know where you learned that language from. <laughs> but uh, so I, it's, I've been having, honestly, the time of my life with that. And, and um, the other thing about it is uh, he's two years old. I had uh, recently, uh, th three weeks ago, I had a, a baby daughter. So uh, yep, yeah. yeah, this is my baby daughter. Oh my God. So uh, it's my, and my kids, once again, a different angle. These are my two kids and my two uh, stepchildren. I just wanted uh, to, to kind of say that. It's, it's Personal. I, I love, I love uh, taking pictures of my family, and, and is really, really what it's all about. And once again, can I really, can I really thank everyone? Thank you so much for coming out to see me. I, I can't even tell you. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's great. Yes, I do use a Nikon body. Uh, my lenses are exclusively. Uh, the question was if I use Nikon bodies. I, I do use Nikon bodies, and my all my lenses are Sigmas. I just feel like they're faster, and they specialize in lenses. Uh, so that I've always had good uh, experience with them. This, uh, this is, yep. Uh, just so you know, my lens, uh, my bodies. Uh, my main one that I use is a Nikon 300S. The reason why I like the 300S is that it has dual card slots. So as soon as I shoot it, it goes into two cards. The reason why is so I can sleep at night. When I go shoot my events, I know that it's doubled over right away, and immediately when I get back to my hotel or my home, I will download it once again to get multiple copies of it so I feel safe and uh, good at night. OK. Um, I use all prime lenses. The uh, 85 is the main one I use. And I have a 50 millimeter. And most of the time, uh, when I am doing a wedding, um, if I am not using one of my fish eyes, I always have um, two lenses at a wedding. Now, usually if I'm out in the park somewhere and I am just doing engagement photos or just, just um, I guess, pictures or portraits, all I have is one camera and one lens on it. And I just walk around like that. That's all I do. In fact, a lot of times uh, uh, when I walk around, some people, they, don't, they can't even tell like I'm a professional photographer. I've had some times at a park where people would come up and give me uh, pointers as I was shooting. <laughs> so all I do is I usually use my 85 for most of my portraits. When I'm at a wedding, I hold the 50 because when I'm doing group shots, and yes, yes, I do the group shots um, as, uh, as well. So like not everything I do is always super duper creative. As a wedding photographer, you have to do that as well. I have a very simple system when it comes to, um, when it comes to this. I use my a camera to direct my client on what I want them to do. In general, it's just basically four things that you could possibly do as a photographer. It's chin up, chin down, tilt your head this way, tilt your head that way. Everything I do is based upon that to pose a person. So as I'm shooting, what I do is I shoot them in about five or six picture sets, move on to somewhere else, and each set I use, what I do is I move them one way or the other in order so when I shoot them that they're posed one way differently or not. Does that make sense a little bit so far? OK. So this is how I start. Five different uh, 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 sets that I usually do. And I usually start off by telling a person where to stand. So if I'm taking a picture of a person right here, I say, hey, just uh, stand right here. Just lean up against this uh, uh, desk right here and look over here at me. Now, the reason why I say that is because when a person when you touch someone, what does a person usually do? Yep, yep, they, they draw back. So rather than pose a person, I just tell them, hey, stand there. They might do it their own way. Sometimes they'll just do it like this. It doesn't matter. But once I get them set, I begin shooting. Okay? And what I do is I just start shooting. I don't care what they look like. Um, I just start shooting because I'm trying to gain their confidence, right? I never, even if they're ugly, never do this. Damn. <laughs> so I just start shooting right away, and I say, OK, well, let me get my shutter speed up. So 
I say, okay, look right here, good, okay. Tilt your head slightly this way, good, okay. Chin down slightly, good. Okay, look over your shoulder this way, and chin down slightly this way, good. And look back at me and give me a smile. Okay, once I did that, I did a set, very simple. But all I'm doing when I shoot this is what? They're just standing here and they're listening to each direction that I have. It's very simple, you guys know it. If I sat here and talked like this, what would you say? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got a problem. Yeah, you say, hey, chin down a little bit. Right, so it's all, that's all it is. So I, I'll just move them one way or the other by slight movements um, either way. Then I'll pick another spot. It might be um, a park bench. And I might say, oh, okay, let's start over here. Okay, I'm gonna have you sit on the edge of this park bench and just lean forward just like this. So they'll do it, right? But they'll do it how? Their way. Their way. So they'll go, okay, little different than what I wanted, but they're natural, so your picture's already gonna be natural. So they're sitting there like this, and then once again, I pick, do my uh, five or six or seven picture set. I say, okay, good, okay. Look right here at me. Okay, good. Okay, what I need you to do is chin down very slightly, good. Okay, tilt your head slightly this way, good. And what I want you to do is move over this way and look down this way, and then look right here at me, good. And that's how I shoot it. And I just are, am able to move them comfortably within that. Out of that five picture set, I might use two pictures, you know, but because some of them don't work, some of them work good. And sometimes I'll see the perfect angle to shoot them at, and you'll know it, right? You don't, no one needs to tell you what a good picture looks like or not. Once you do that, Sometimes I'll adjust it one way or the other. Move, talk, and then move to another location. And you'll notice too, um, you'll notice too that when I shoot, I always give a buzzword. My buzzword could be good, yours could be okay or whatever, but that's where we move away from that. Look at me and say cheese, because you're really just, that they will learn to move with, what, how you go. So once again, I'll do another shot, I'll say okay, uh, this time, let's do this. Um, I'm going to have you put one knee up here this way, and so you can lean forward like this. They'll do it their way again, and once again, I'll go through my set. I'll say, okay, look right here at me. Okay, good. Okay, this time what I want you to do, and, and once again, I use my camera as a guide. I want you to tilt your head slightly this way, good, and chin down, good. Okay, look right here, good. Okay, this time I want you to completely look over your shoulder this way. Chin down slightly, good, and move your eyes only so you're looking at me, good. Then you move from set to set, and that's how I am able to go take pictures of people and move very carefully through a place, a park, and other than that, I try to make it as simple as possible. And that's why, I'm not saying that it's bad, I mean, every photographer has their own way of doing things, but the way I do it is just, make it as simple as possible so they're not overwhelmed. The, they feel like, I, I tell my, my photographers is that if you're, you're doing this and you're taking a portrait of someone, it's no different than you taking your sister and taking her out for a walk in the park. I go there, I scope it out, and I go one, two, three, four, five. I walk around and say, this backdrop will be cool, this backdrop will be cool, and I study it, and then I meet them, and I just go for a walk, and try different things along the route that I've, I've picked out and take pictures of them that way. To me, is the simplest way of doing it, and that's how I do it with my 85. At a wedding, it's a little different because you, uh, uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll have, to, not a lot of times, all the times, I'll have two cameras. If I'm doing a, if I'm doing formal pictures, what I'll do is I'll have uh, my 85 so that I can have uh, waist up pictures or, you know, closer pictures and then I'll have my uh, uh, 50 ready so I could do a full length or, or group pictures and sometimes I'll have uh, one ultra short so maybe a 15 if I need be and then the rest is shot whenever possible with an 85. Uh, once again I use the um, 85 uh, Sigma 1.4 but I usually shoot it just so you know I shoot it at 1.8 uh, because I think that 1.4 is starting to break that barrier of, of the depth of field where it's very 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 tricky, especially with couples where one's a little bit in a further plane than the other. So I do like shooting at 1.8, sometimes I'll do it at 2.8, but that way I have the, the depth of field going there. But I do like the 1.4 because I like that emergency so that if it is dark there, that I'll have the luxury item of going 
uh, bringing in more light into the, the camera. Um, basically when it comes to uh, what I do as a photographer is I tried my best to reserve most of my uh, days, my Monday through Thursdays, to actually um, taking my camera out and I do something that is unique to professional <coughs> photographers. I actually practice my photography. You, I don't think you hear too much about people that actually practice uh, photography anymore, or even pros. Um, I love practicing. I, I take out lenses. I try them out on, on, under different situations. I play uh, what I call the, the Rubik's Cube game with my camera. I take my camera, have someone jack up all the uh, settings right, to, to mess you up so I can pick it up and I see how fast and a time how fast I can put it all back together to my settings that I feel comfortable with. <laughs> right? why, would I, why would I do that? Because to me, the speed of what I do is part of the comfort level of, of how I work with my brides. Yeah, granted, most of the time, I look down at my camera and I say, OK, I'm on this setting, I'm on this setting, everything's cool, I got it all set. But you've all had it, and I know every professional had it, that either someone picked up their camera, or you hit format or something, and something messed up, and then your, your camera, you find out you're shooting at a different, different uh, setting than you're used to. That's why I play this game where I jack it all up, or have someone jack it up, and I see how fast I can return it back to the normal settings. Um, I always do this game where sometimes with my other photographers, I mess up something that will make them, where you see the E and everyone panics on their camera. You know, you see that, how do you, how do you fix that? Um, the other game that we play um, a lot of times is if I take, especially when it comes to the camera, because I'm available light, some of my newer photographers, we play this game where they take a, a, a statue, a small little statue, and the name of the game is to take at different areas of the house, and take a picture. See how fast you can make the uh, adjustment to get the perfect exposure on that. And that's part of what I do. To me, um, when you are a professional photographer, the whole thing should engulf you when it comes to that. And that's what it's really all about. And that's what I love, love to do with, when it comes to the uh, photographs. I have 100% thoroughly enjoyed being here with you guys. And th th thank you. And I, I really honestly wish that if, if anything, uh, besides the message of the lens, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful with uh, um, uh, B&H for, uh, for inviting me here. They're, this is amazing, amazing facility. Um, I know most of the, uh, not to have tons of employees, but I know a lot of the guys here personally, they are top notch, and this place is a great, great place. Uh, with uh, Black River Imaging, at least check them out. And, and thank you very much for Sigma as well. But honestly, thank you very much. But if there's one message that I want you to please have is really greatness is, is within yourself. It's, it's all up to you. It's all up to your vision to make it and make everything you want to do with photography happen. The, your images that you inspire in other people should come from your heart and come from your mind. And it's just up to you to say, you know what? I can do it, and I can make these people love the things that I do with my camera. So thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate it. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.